In this video, we're going to study the elements of a fire triangle. The learning competency for this video is to recognize elements of the fire triangle in different situations. The specific learning outcomes are the following. For thousands of years, man has mastered or at least attempted to master the useful resource of fire. Generating light and heat Fire has many uses and might provide more benefits to people today than at any other point in history. It powers our homes and industries. The electricity that powers our homes comes from power plants, most of which have fire at the core of production. Power plants use generators that utilize fire for processing. These power plants generate greater amounts of electricity than wind or solar-powered sources, but they also cause greater damage to the environment. Coal and other types of fossil fuels used for fire release pollutants when burned. So fire, when not controlled, can cause destruction and injury. This table shows the pros and cons of fire. So for the pros, it gives warmth it is used for cooking, it is used in many industrial processes, and used as a light source. And the cons are the following. It causes injury or even death, destroys important materials, and burns down houses or forests. Now, when does a fire become a hazard? Why? Wow. Again, a hazard is a dangerous phenomenon, substance, human activity or condition that may cause loss of life, injury or other health impacts, property damage, loss of livelihood and services, social and economic disruption, or environmental damage. In 2018, the Bureau of Fire Protection or BFP has recorded a total of 14,316 fire incidents from January 1 to December 27. So that would be around 40 fire incidents a day. So BFP is the Government Fire Service of the Philippines under the jurisdiction of the Department of Interior and Local Government or DILG. That is why last 1966, President Ferdinand Marcos signed Proclamation 115A that assigned a particular aspect of safety and accident prevention to each month of the year. Incidentally, March was also declared the Burn or Fire Prevention Month as per Proclamation 360 of President Corazon Aquino. So this proclamation aims to disseminate knowledge in the field of burn prevention and to enhance education in all phases of burn care. So why is it March? March happens to be one of the hottest months in the country. So according to PAGASA, or the Philippine Atmospheric, Geophysical, and Astronomical Services Administration, it is around this month when temperature and humidity starts to reach high levels, causing high sensible temperature in the country. Now, we have talked about fire, but what is fire? Fire is a chemical reaction in which energy in the form of heat is produced, right? So the chemical reaction is known as combustion. Combustion occurs when fuel or other materials reacts rapidly with oxygen, giving off light, heat, and flame. So a flame is produced during the ignition point in the combustion reaction and is the visible gaseous part of a fire. A flame is produced during the ignition point in the combustion reaction and is the visible gaseous part of a fire. So flame consists primarily of carbon dioxide, water vapor, oxygen, and nitrogen. So basically, this is the opposite process of photosynthesis. Okay, so combustion is the breaking apart of building blocks put together through photosynthesis, meaning it is the release of energy during photosynthesis. Again, photosynthesis is the process used by plants 
algae, and certain bacteria to harness energy from sunlight and turn it into chemical energy, right? Now, combustion is the breaking apart of the building blocks put together through photosynthesis. So basically, it is the release of energy acquired during photosynthesis. So you can see in this figure. Okay. Now, let's go to the fire triangle. The fire triangle includes three components that must be present for a fire to burn. These components are fuel, oxygen, and heat or ignition source. So this is what you call the fire triangle. So without one of these components, fire cannot exist. So for a fire to ignite, there must be an initial and continued heat source. Now this is called a chain reaction and is part of what makes up the fire tetrahedron. So in the middle, as you can see here, that's the chain reaction. So heat allows fire to spread by removing the moisture from nearby fuel, warming surrounding air, and preheating the fuel in its path. So when the fire becomes either fuel controlled, meaning there is no more fuel to burn, or ventilation controlled, meaning there is not enough oxygen to sustain combustion, the fire decays to a smoldering state like this. Now, there are four ways to put out the fire. Basically, you just have to remove one of these components here in the fire triangle to put out the fire. Listen, look, and listen, and learn. <laughs> the first thing that you need to do is to cool the burning material. Okay, again, the fire preheats the fuel. So what you need to do is to lower its temperature so that it will not easily burn. Next, you exclude oxygen. Just remove its oxygen by covering something that is burning. So if you want to try it at home, get a candle and lit it, then cover it with glass. So this will exclude oxygen and the fire will eventually burn out. Next, you remove the fuel and you break the chemical reaction. Now let's discuss the fire triangle more. This heat or ignition sources include anything capable of generating heat. For example, lightning, um, cigarettes, power lines, catalytic converters, small engine sparks, matches, and a magnifying glass. Okay. Now this one, the fuel, fuel sources include any kind of combustible materials, anything that can be burned. Okay, such as grass, shrubs, trees, houses, propane tanks, your LPGs, wood piles, and decks. So fuels are categorized by their moisture content, meaning how wet the fuel is. It is also classified by its size, shape, quantity, and arrangement in which they are spread over the landscape. Now the last part of the triangle is the oxygen. So ambient air is made up of approximately 21% oxygen and most fires require at least 16% oxygen content to burn. So a fire ignited in an area that has little oxygen will support only a small flame. Now if oxygen is suddenly and rapidly added to a nearly suffocated fire, the reoxygenated air will quickly ignite, creating large and dangerous flames known as a flashover or backdraft. So this will be further discussed in the next video. Basic response procedures to fire. <sighs> <laughs> 이거 이거 엔진데? <웃음>